An invitation to spend a couple of days with Dave Grohl and Taylor Hawkins from the hugely successful band Foo Fighters is not something to knock back. It comes with a sense of foreboding though, because you're never quite sure what's about to happen or why. Grohl and Hawkins have well and truly worked out that every waking moment is for living. As well as not having an off switch, they also have no filter, which is a nice way of saying you'll be hearing plenty of swearing. But more than anything, these rock legends are great fun. Their music's not too bad either. Foo Fighters 60 Minutes interview, take one. How many takes are you expecting? We could take a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. Might take a few. There are some certainties when it comes to interviewing the Foo Fighters. The singer! Exactly. There'll be a liberal <laughs> dose of expletives. I gotta pee really <laughs> fucking bad right now. That long black was a long black. Some jaw-dropping <laughs> stories. I can't wait to enjoy it. Right he in my face. Slap him in the face. <laughs> Prince Harry slapped him. And I was like, motherfucker. <laughs> and lots of laughs. I didn't say that. You didn't say that. You didn't say that. The golden rule. <laughs> Expect the unexpected. Woo! Particularly when these hyperactive rock and rollers are in their fifth time zone in five days. What is time? And, you know, when you wow, think about I didn't realize we were going to get this deep. Is it just like a succession of moments? He's been awake for a while, hasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I'm tripping balls right now, people. You don't take yourselves too seriously, do you? What makes you say that? <laughs> um, well, you know, for some things, yeah, we take, we take our music very seriously. But everything else is just such a circus that I think the only way to survive is to take everything with a grain of salt and just go with it. Born out of the ashes of 90s grunge band Nirvana, Foo Fighters have been going hard at it for 23 years. Dave Grohl is the founder and frontman. And Taylor Hawkins, the drum pounding backbone of one of the most successful rock acts of all time. Today, they're soaking up the nostalgia at Selena's. I remember more about the after show than the show. <laughs> the iconic Sydney pub they last played two decades ago. It was, to us, this was a big deal. Isn't that amazing? Once upon a time, you dreamed of playing in a venue this big. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And Nirvana, 92. Oh, really? Oh my God, we did, didn't yeah. we? <gasps> wow. Mm -hmm. And there's the drum set you play. <laughs> and there it is. Yeah. Oh my, this is my life. <laughs> amazing. Sound check. It's almost like you meet couples or you know people in relationships where they're just like rah, 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 but you know they'll stay together forever. Mm. Um, we're not like that. We've never really had that um, creative friction. So, so this is a genuine friendship? Each no, we're other. just fucking great actors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is the best role I've ever played. Uh -huh. Taylor's friend. Yep. <laughs> That's not an easy one. No, tell you. I deserve an Academy Award yeah, for this seriously. shit. Oh my god! That is fucking mental! I know, I've never seen it like that. Oh my god! Dave and Taylor are in Australia for the release of their ninth studio album, Concrete and Gold. Dude, have you seen the surf go down to Bondi right now? Enjoying some rare downtime before embarking on yet another world tour. Dave's time. in charge. No, he's, okay. he's ordering Am I in me. charge, really? Yeah. What kind of whiskey do you have? You're seriously going to whiskey before lunch? I mean, he fucking threw the gauntlet down. What am I going to do? <laughs> if you want to hang with Foo Fighters, you're expected to keep up. OK, we're not driving, are we, after No, this? we're not. We've got nothing to do. Gentlemen. Cheers. Great to see you again. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for lunch. I'm assuming you're paying for it. Yeah, sure. Great. Woo! This is on 60 Minutes, right? Your latest album, you collaborated with a pop producer. Yeah. I thought that pop and rock were sworn enemies. Well, I don't think so, actually. Pop music that just has... means a good. That means a song that's popular because it's good. Mm. You know, I, it's... <laughs> and memorable. Remember the Britney Spears quote? <laughs> yeah, Britney Spears, what did she say? She said, 
Anybody can make a Radiohead record. That's easy. <laughs> Trying to write a hit song, now that's hard. She's it might be the only it. brilliant thing she's ever said. Beg me to talk about it. I could stand. The Foo Fighters have never been afraid to throw out the rock star rule book. Whether it's poking fun at their ageing selves in their latest music video. Our new best friend, Rick Astley, right now. Performing live with 80s pop star Rick Astley. Welcome to Next Generation. Or getting Dave's eight-year-old daughter, Harper, on stage to play drums. We were in Iceland and I said, hey, you want to get up in front of 20,000 people and do that We Will Rock You thing? She's like, okay. We will, we will rock you. She was so calm. She didn't appear nervous. She's a girl, man. Come on, what are you talking about? That's the DNA right there. She grows with it. Is she out? <laughs> To get on the roller coaster for a little while. <laughs> All of the band members are now proud family men. Just don't take it too far. Oh, that was great the other day. This like real sort of news presenter. She's like, right out of the gate, first question. So, you're a dad band, and we're like. No one had ever called us a dad band yeah, before. They are a dad band now. I'm like, fuck you, man. Yeah. Dad rock. Mm. Dad rock. I'd heard dad rock before, yeah. but dad band. I first met Foo Fighters two and a half years ago at their studio in LA. <laughs> Black and white. Yeah. As always, there were plenty of laughs. Uh, cross eyed. Three months later, though, came a defining moment. During a show in Sweden, Dave fell off the stage. Well, I fall, and then I go to stand up, and I don't feel any pain. I go to stand up, and it's just like a sack of sausage. There's just fucking nothing in there. I'm like, oh, my God. And I sit down, and, I, and these guys are still... <laughs> I think I just broke my leg. I see our security guard. And I, I, he looks at me and I go, Ray, I broke my leg. <laughs> He's like, you for real? I'm like, I broke my fucking leg. What happened next would immortalize Dave Grohl in rock and roll history. With his leg badly broken, he was carried onto the stage to finish the show. Perfect timing, because it was right in that section of under pressure where I, I go, <laughs> tripping around oh. with my brains on the floor. Tripping around. Is that what happened? Yes! Oh, like like right then. I, I was just so funny, man. It was so perfect. It's definitely the weirdest. And then, maybe the greatest show we've ever played? Determined not to disappoint fans, Dave went on to perform the rest of the tour from a custom-built throne. I'm tell you, that was fucking great. <laughs> because I just had to sit there like a Roman emperor with a shot of Jägermeister next to me. Like, let me hear you say fuck yeah! Like, you know. And some I just, of our best it shots. Great. It was so much fun. I, I thought we were doomed. All the great stadium front men need to have that stage and be this big, giant thing, you know? And I'm thinking, there's no way he can do it from a throne. And he did. Now that's called a big personality right there. <laughs> when Dave Grohl fell off the stage and broke his leg, he surprised everyone, including bandmate Taylor Hawkins, by continuing the Foo Fighters world tour, performing from a throne. I think, in a way, Dave had been running around so much on stage for the last 15 years or whatever that for the first time people could just like have him they can just see him just sit there and, and sing. But a busted leg and the strain of constantly being on the road proved too much. At a concert in Chicago, Dave lost it. I walked off stage and 
fully broke down in the dressing room. Tease. The, it was the... like, I mean, it was like wailing, sobbing. It was really embarrassing. It's actually. like when your parents are crying. I've got my head in a towel just going, <laughs> and the other guys are like putting on their socks and changing on their underwear. It's all quiet. Like, huh. are you okay, Dave? I'm like, I'm fine. Well, I think this a breakdown. You know, I fully had a, I totally had a breakdown. And then when we stopped touring, we got home, you know, I like grew the beard and I had the weird robe and I didn't leave the house for weeks. And mm. I told everybody like, let's, I don't want to do anything for a year. Like, let's just stop. Let's take a break. No, it We're burning it too right. hard. We got to stop. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. The band's hiatus and Dave's solo Dave performance at the 2016 Oscars led to speculation of a looming split. How did you find having the stage to yourself? Um, I loved it. I found it to be um, a lot easier. And I, I kind of, <laughs> I feel like it sounded better than I do with the other guys. Okay. So one finger, right? Mm. Just takes one finger. The music is right at your fingertips. In typical Foo Fighters style, they right, lampooned breakup rumors with a spoof video of Dave's new solo direction. Uh, uh, what, what, what? But six months on, it was time to get back to making music for real. Come on, baby. What I have learned is that when you're going that hard for that long, you start to blame the music for all of your problems. And then you step away from it and you start to realize that the music was the one thing that healed you the whole time. You took yourself off to a house, I think you bought a case of wine and you yeah. wrote in your undies for five days. Yeah. I'm just imagining that apocalypse now scene. It was like that. <laughs> no, don't. I punched a mirror, <clears throat> spread the blood all over my <laughs> naked body and, and wrote um, some songs. The result was their latest album, one of Foo Fighters' most ambitious, proving these rockers are as together as they've ever been. Do you feel that, you know, that the pressure of the band, a lot of that is on your shoulders? Yeah, for sure. Mm. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I know that at the, end of, at the end of the day, it's my name at the bottom of the check, you know? I gotta make sure that whatever we do is, Not crap. is up to, Snuff, make sure it's good. And there's a lot of pressure, but I mean, honestly, like I've had shitty jobs. I worked at Shakey's Pizza. You don't want that pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our house. Today though, there's, there's something this else on the menu. Big Mac attack. How are you? Oh, you can say hi? Hi. What's up, man? How you doing, man? Dave and Taylor have invited themselves over to my place to cook dinner. Is that mama? He's got you, mama. buddy. He's got it's you. Mama. Does this make you miss your kids? Well, oh. it's nice to hold something that doesn't weigh 75 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Missing the comforts of home. Oh. <laughs> Too much party, huh? Yeah. Oh. This self-confessed barbecue addict can't wait to pick up the tongs. Yeah, when I came off the road and had nothing to do, I sat in front of a smoker and watched briskets for <laughs> a long time. How many were you cooking, like, like one, to, one a week? I was doing a couple a week, but I was also doing pork butts and ribs and turkeys and chickens, and I went nuts. I like the look of that one. Dave Grohl proving it's not just guitar chops that are his specialty. Oh, that you good. How you want it right there. But before these two Foo Fighters leave Australia, they have one final thing to do. Hello. Right. No. Perform a secret gig at a tiny venue in Sydney. So size doesn't matter? Uh, not when it comes to the Chevy Metal. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a bit of fun for Dave Grohl, Taylor Hawkins and their mates, playing their favourite rock songs as their alter ego, Chevy Metal. Surely, the world's most talented cover band. There's good and bad things about going on tour for years at a time. You know, the one thing that keeps you going is that two or three hours on stage, because that kind of you know, reminds you that you're alive and then why you're there. And then afterwards, you're like, that was, that was the best night of my no. fucking life. Yeah. 
It's... I think that's why you do it. Just trying to make the Foo Fighters great again. Yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> oh, I got that. Thanks, man. That was funny. <laughs> Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.